thank you. I am honored to have been invited to speak with you all today. I truly believe if it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be in front of you if it wasn't for Bakersfield Junior College. Junior College provided me support as an athlete, a student, and a man. I didn't have an easy childhood. My mother had a seventh grade education, and I'm told my father was killed around two years old. I have no memory of him. I grew up in extreme poverty and lived in the projects of Greenville, South Carolina. I was exposed to violence and drugs on the daily. I didn't have anybody in my childhood to encourage me about education. Outside of the home, there were older kids who I would run and race and play football with that made me work harder to want to be a football player. I started working when I was 12 years old to help pay for the rent and buy my first weight set so I could train at home. Because I couldn't legally work at the age of 12, I would lie about my age until they forced me to turn in my social security card. Then I would quit and move on to the next job. Being the fastest, the strongest wasn't just about sports, it was to ensure my safety. To make sure I could outrun the neighborhood dogs who would chase me home from work, or win the fights when I was confronted and dominate on the football field, of course. Football has been a part of my life as long as I remember. Most of my fun and memories as a little boy growing up in Greenville, South Carolina involved sports. Football was my saving grace, and I truly believe had not had football, I would be in prison today. Before high school, I had already been brought home by police officers for shoplifting. Instinctively, I knew football was the way out of the projects and a dream of a life where I could be an amazing father and husband. When I would hear others talk to their sons, I would get envious of their relationship with their father. I was fortunate when I was in high school to meet another family that took me in. I first met Monty and Jackie Broom in the seventh grade, and they asked me to play on their sons, Nate's Eastside Dolphins. I had an amazing high school career. I ran track, and I was a state weightlifting champion. Money and Jackie made highlight tapes, wrote letters on my behalf to encourage me to grade go to school, but I didn't have the academics. So while I had uh, recruiters recruiting me, my grades and SAT scores wasn't good enough. Through the Brooms outreach, I received a recommendation to go to Bakersfield Junior College. We didn't have the internet back then, so even today we don't know how it happened, but the universe answered for me. At that time, I had never been out of the state of South Carolina or the city of Greenville. I told Monty I wanted to get a job at a local mill or go to the military. Money and Jackie sat me down and told me that they had already bought the ticket, Flight 93 Delta, to Bakersfield, California. Money talked talk to me the whole way to the airport. I cried the entire way. Once I got to the airport and got on the plane, I cried the entire way to Bakersfield. Bakersfield could not have been more different than my hometown. I was the only out-of-state kid. I dressed and spoke differently than everybody. Bakersfield Junior College was the best place for me. JUCO knows how to build communities. The coaching administration staff became my family. I've had the good fortune to be coached by some of the best coaches in the world, Coach Bill Cower and Coach Tom Coughlin. But the coaches at Bakersfield Junior College were my best coaches. These men believed in me, pushed me, and held me accountable. People often underestimate the high caliber of coaching at the junior college level. Bakersfield Junior College became my home. Junior college sports built a foundation for me to play at the next level. We had one of the most elite teams in the country. I can remember 
uh, one game my sophomore year, I ran for 300 and some yards and five touchdowns. I was, I couldn't wait to get into the film room on Sunday so Coach Bowser can celebrate the great game I had. He went through everybody, told them the good and bad of what they did on the field. And when he got to me, everything was negative. Jonesy, you missed the block. Jonesy, you didn't carry out the fake. He kept going on and on, and I, he brought me to tears. After the film session, the coaches pulled me aside and told me what they saw in me and how important the bigger picture was. They made me a better running back. After my first season at Bakersfield, Coach Bowser told me if I go home, get in tremendous shape, I will come back and he will build the offense around me. I went home, I trained. At that time, there were no private trainers. I lift weights, I did all the running to get myself in supreme shape. And when I got back the next season, he kept his word and I was the guy. One of the many benefits of junior college is the community you build. I don't, what I'm about to say now, I don't recommend anybody else doing. I remember my sophomore year, in 1989, I had uh, my, my appendix exploded while I was in Columbia, South Carolina at a wrestling match. And so fast forward to 1994, the scar tissue from my stomach swelled up and it caused me I had to go to the hospital. I remember Coach Bowser saying, if you don't practice, you can't play. That echoed in my mind all the time. And I know a lot of you who've been in the hospital, they take their, you know, their slow time coming to check you out. So what I did was I took all the IVs, all the things out of my arm, put my clothes on, went to the payphone, called the cab, and got back to Bakersfield, and I was on the practice field. The doctor uh, called while I was on the practice field and asked, where is George? And the athletic trainer said, he's out here on the practice field. And he told them that everything was okay. But the reason why I'm telling you this story because I felt I had an obligation not only to myself, the little kids who looked up to me, the fans, the faculty, my teammates, the coaching staff, the janitors, the people who cook our food. I had an obligation to be at my best at all times so I can help our team win on Saturdays. I wasn't the best student in junior college experience gave me a smaller class environment. The teachers actually saw, saw something in me, they believed in me and they encouraged me. I wasn't just a number in a large lecture hall. My English professor, Cindy Roberts, will work with me before and after class to make sure I do well in her class. The administration staff would encourage me to focus on my academics. This experience supported the competitiveness at the junior college level is what got me into the record books. Breaking the national record for touchdowns in the season, breaking records that was previously held by NFL greats Marshall Falk and O.J. Simpson and others would have not been possible if it wasn't for the junior college experience. Bakersfield Junior College is everything to me. I don't have the words to fully articulate the impact the city, the community, the faculty, the friendships that had on me. The junior college experience, Coach Carl Bowser, the entire coaching staff, athletic staff, shaped my work ethic and my practice habits to ensure I had the fundamentals to be successful in a large university and prepared me for the transition to San Diego State. When I went to San Diego State, I was seventh on the depth chart. Coach Bowser's words echoed in my ear. Train harder, you will be the guy. I began to move up the depth chart because of what I learned at Bakersfield. So I did my best to outwork everybody. I studied harder, I trained harder, I took every rep I could. When the first game came around, we still didn't know who was gonna be the starter. As we was walking out of the tunnel, the, the head um, running back coach, Coach Pola, told me, George, you're the guy. 
First play of the game, I got in and I went the wrong way. And he gave me an earful. He pulled me out of the game. I was worried I had lost my chance. But they gave me another chance and the rest is history. Discipline, perseverance, faith. Junior college taught me that it had carried me into the NFL. The foundation was set at Bakersfield Junior College. My wife, Katie, who is also a junior college, went to San Joaquin Delta Community College in Northern California. Katie was a great high school student. She, she grew up in a middle class home with both parents. She was the top of her class in grades. When people say to me that junior college is for poor and people with bad grades, I dispel that because my wife is living proof of that. For my wife, it was the smarter decision for her. She was able to take her general education classes at an affordable rate while she worked part time. She would tell you it allowed her to graduate in four years while her friends who went to a four year school right out of high school graduated in five years and also had more student debt. Today, my wife is the CEO of the national nonprofit National Domestic Violence Hotline. She would tell you her political science and criminal justice professors at junior college helped see her social justice in our society. Growing up in a small town, they exposed her to different schools of thought and this fueled her to pursue a career in social services. She went on to get two master's degrees and dedicate her life's work to ending domestic violence. Today, me and my wife have three sons, George Jr., Max, and Cooper. We are using the foundation of our life and junior college experiences to shape our young boys into men. Two of them are student athletes and we prioritize the word student first. I'm in the process of writing a book about fatherhood. If you want to know more about that, you can go to www.thepresentdad.com. I hope that I can shape other fathers to truly be engaged and present in their kid's life. As I reflect on the people who have shaped me as a man and a father and a friend I am today, that was all possible with the faculty at Bakersfield Junior College. Bakersfield Junior College was a huge part of my journey. They helped me envision a different life for myself. They saw something in me before I saw it in myself. I hope today, as you hear my story, you take a moment to appreciate the difference you're making in someone else's life. There is a really good chance you will not even know the profound impact you are having on someone if you are showing up consistently truly seeing the student in front of you and continuing to believe in them. There are key figures in my life who gave me food when they didn't know I was hungry, gave me friendship when they didn't know I was lonely. Never in a million years, I would have thought I would be an author or that I would be up here today giving a keynote speech. Junior college changed my trajectory and I am forever grateful to the junior college experience. God bless you all and God bless football. Thank you.